background into it. Paradox Just like old times, eh, Captain? Always did have a choice. You have a choice here. This is the final conference. Do you even know who you are? I do, and soon they will too. Hello, Internet! Welcome to Game Theory, the show that's officially decided that a multi-choice YouTube series is, in fact, a video game. Ooh, that's right! Today we're game. talking about the Wibbly- I really... I don't know. Really impressive, like, just the lore that Markiplier has created pretty much on his own. Like, I really... If I were, like, creating full-time, I would want to do not something like that, but I think I would want to have some elements of mystery. Like, I think it makes a lot of what he... the videos that he creates so much more interesting, and there's all the little Easter eggs. Like, it just feels like it's super rewarding if you're one of the people who's actually following it and engaging into it. And, like, you, d you find, like, some secret hint that, like, ties a bunch of pieces together. Like... It's almost like an ARG, but it's also one person. It's like, like easy enough that if someone's looking, they can find it. But that if someone isn't looking, maybe they notice something's a little off, but they don't really question it too much. I don't know. I just think that's so fascinating wobbly, timey-wimey story of In Space with Markiplier, the follow-up to Mark's first YouTube original, A Heist with Markiplier. Both projects have you teaming up with Mark to navigate through a choose-your-own-adventure-style quest. Of course, things don't go as planned, and the resulting chaos has you whip-panning your way through a sea of interesting places and people. You gotta separate your bones from your meat, otherwise... You're gonna get chaos. I, I mean, the man has a great point there. You do have to separate the bones from the meat. And in outer space, things get even more interesting. Engines are looking good, Captain. Really, the supporting cast for this thing is out of this world. Chef's kiss, mwah, 10 out of 10. Speaking of things that are out of this world, seamless segue for the win, as you might expect from anything sci-fi, in space doesn't just mess with branching pathways, but also with time loops, wormholes, and the multiverse. All concepts that boil down to one thing, lore. Lord. Now, if this was any other project, I probably wouldn't be making this video. Sure, there's lots of branching paths and cool Easter eggs hidden inside of them, but the lore would be right there for you, available for anyone that's diligent enough to dig through the various decision trees. But this is a Markiplier project, and if you've ever seen my past videos on Markiplier, the projects he touches tend to have a bit more bubbling underneath the surface. For the uninitiated, Markiplier has quite a large amount of lore on his channel, with characters ranging from Wilford Wharfstash to Dark Applier. Characters that started off as little one-off jokes that eventually became fully fleshed out with their own backstories and motivations. We've dissected some of this lore before, but with In Space Part 1 being Markiplier's biggest and most ambitious project ever, I suspected that these personalities- I'm not the like, I'm definitely not the biggest expert on Markiplier lore, but I have watched some of them. Like, I did go through a heist with Markiplier like twice. There's also that, like, series of, like, Who Killed Markiplier. That was, like, super fascinating. I think there's a lot of lore there. And, I mean, he obviously, he did, was part of Unis Anis. That isn't really part of his connected universe, but even just a lot of the themes and ideas there were really cool. So, yeah, I do like a lot of the content that he's made so far might be making a return. Sure, you can play through in space to kill off Mark as many times as you want. Totally fine. If that's what you want to do, great. Go for it. But there were also moments that kept setting off my theorist senses. Namely, the constant or one-off lines that seem to imply a greater history to this world. Lines like Do you even know who you are? Sprinkled throughout told me that there was a mystery here. A big reveal waiting in the wings to happen in part two. So, I dug in. And let me tell you, there is a lot hidden here. Buckle up! up, theorists, because I'm about to launch your brains into the stratosphere. I think I figured out what the main climax of In Space with Markiplier Part 2 is going to be, and despite all the hints that Mark's been throwing out, I don't think it's what you'd expect. Also, before I get too deep into this, I'm sure some of you are thinking that I've cheated, that I'm going to spoil the ending because I was in the show. The truth is, I wouldn't be making this video if I did know the ending. Mark is a good friend, and he's worked really hard on this project. I wouldn't want to ruin the surprise that he has for his audience. 
when working on the show, I never saw the whole thing. I was only exposed to the parts that I was in. TLDR here, I don't want to act as the Tom Holland of this MCU, Markiplier Connected Universe. This is being treated like any other video that we do. We're dissecting clues that are presented within the videos that we have at our disposal, and that's it. We're not pulling from any extra insider information. So in my initial playthrough of In Space on GT Live, I pointed out that we needed to be wary of Celsi, this. the head of Cryo played by it's Pamela true. Horton. All right, so uh, Pam, always hey, important to note with these episodes, as we've done in a previous theory, Pam tends to be the same character in different Third settings. You see, Pam's most really notable character to date has been Celine from Who Killed Markiplier, a four-part murder mystery released back in 2017 about a friendly yeah, poker night that goes south. And when it comes about. to Markiplier lore, this series really is the foundation for his MCU, as it provides us the backstories for pivotal recurring characters. In it, a pompous jerk named Actor Mark dies. Yep, that is officially what he's known as in the canon. And the primary suspects include his childhood friend Damien the mayor. I know I'm supposed to be a leader in this scenario, but I can't help him feel lost. Damien's sister and Mark's ex-wife, the mystical Celine. Something tells me this seemingly significant event is actually a footnote in a much larger mystery unfolding in our midst. And the wacky, mustache-twirling, gun-toting colonel. Oh, hey! Life needs a bit of madness, eh, chap? It turns out actor Mark's death was all part of a greater plan. Thanks to some magic within the mansion, actor Mark is able to take over Damien's body, while Damien and Celine both take over your body, which gives rise to Mark's most infamous character, the red and blue filtered Dark Applier. Dark Meanwhile, seeing his friends die and come back to life takes a bit of a toll on the old colonel, which causes him to go mad. All these characters then recur throughout Markiplier's other narrative videos. When Darkiplier suddenly shows up in an ending of A Date with Markiplier, we know that he's connected to Damien and Celine, thanks to the same red-blue filter and the recurring theme of choice. I won't force this on you. You have a choice here. I'm tired of giving people a choice. And the Colonel story continues in Wilford Mother-Loving Wharf Stash, where we see the detective from Who Killed Markiplier hunting down the now-deranged Colonel, transformed into the reality-warping killer-slash-journalist Wilford Wharf Stash. Name after name after name, just so you could distance yourself from the real name you should be called. Murderer. Wow. There we all are. How the hell did you do that? So, when In Space features a surprise appearance by Wilford boogieing down to 70s music wearing largely the Aww, same outfit he was wearing in Mother Loving Wharf Stash, you know that these canons are going to be somehow connected. Oh, Given those one. connections, I did some digging on Pam's new character, Celsi. Just before the release of In Space Part 1, Mark posted some photos to Instagram showing the credentials for various crew members aboard the ship. Bert, Gunther, and of course, Celsi. But did you notice anything different about Celsi's card? All of them have their faces scratched out, but Celsi's, instead of the typical white. black, is scratched out in white, with a very distinctive blue and red accent. A motif that's been used time and time again whenever Dark Applier is kicking around. You also very obviously have a name connection. Celsi, Celine, very Celsi's similar. So Dark could Applier. these two actually be the same character? Could Celsi in this new series actually be the seer Celine from Who Killed Mark Applier? The answer is, surprisingly, no. Mark has definitely put some parallels in there, but I couldn't find a linchpin to say that the two were definitely one and the same. So why put in a red herring like that? Well, just because Celsi isn't Celine doesn't mean that Celine isn't aboard the ship. During In Space, if you choose to fire all weapons at the wormhole, Mark opens a locker that's covered in post-it notes. You've got references to Tiny Box Tim, Wharf Stash, Mark's undying love for the captain, but take a look the at the bottom post-it. It says, Doreen Celsi Connection. Okay, we've talked about Celsi, but then who is Doreen? This one's not super complicated. On our tablet, we have a list of crew members with the name Doreen L. Whitaker on it. Later, when an old woman glitches into reality to offer us some cookies, Mark refers to her was. as Mrs. Whitaker, so I think it's pretty okay. safe to say that they're one and the same. But what does that have to do with Celsi? Or Celine, for that matter? Well, take a look at Doreen's so clothes. Sense. The outfit Doreen's wearing is a flowy black dress covered in a celestial pattern. Stars, planets, that kind of thing. Which is incredibly similar to the dress that was worn by the mystical Celine throughout Who Killed Markiplier. But that's not all. In one of the secret endings, Doreen appears and says some very familiar person. sounding lines. But that's your choice. You always did have a choice. I won't force this on you. You have a choice here. Selene as a character has always been about choice, talking about giving us a choice or a lack of choice that we have, so it's important that Doreen is saying these exact same things. And finally, Doreen gives us this very important line. So, Ms. Whitaker, we need you to get in oh, the no, asteroid. No, I'm not married anymore, young man. A fact that gets repeated a couple times. I told you I'm not married anymore. 
Why make us so aware of this detail about a seemingly random character? Well, it's designed to point us in the direction of another character we know. The only other main character within the franchise to be divorced, Celine. She was divorced from the actor Mark in Who Killed? In short, Celsi was the logical stepping stone. A hint from Mark to us theorists that Celine was in fact here, just not in the body that we expected her to be in. Not in Celsi, but in Doreen. So Celine is here, and Worfstash is definitely here, then where are the other characters from the story? Where are actor Mark, and most importantly of all, Darkiplier? Well, back in May of 2019, Mark released another video as part of his Markiplier connected universe, Damien. This video, if it wasn't obvious, focuses on the character Damien, and the frosty limbo that he and Celine exist in after the events of Who Killed Markiplier. In it, we see Damien going through a looping cycle day after day until his routine is broken by the evil actor Mark. Narcissistic as ever, and obsessed with having someone play the villain to his hero. You don't realize this place is a dream, a never-ending starring role as the hero. But what is a hero without a villain? You honestly think that you're the hero in all of this? <laughs> Well, of course I am. In the end, Celine cedes control of Darkiplier to Damien alone so he can get his revenge on actor Mark while she goes to rest. You can't come back from this. It'll change you. Well, he did say he wanted me to be the villain. Maybe he should be more careful with his wishes. Notice the language here. This repeated emphasis on the battle between a hero and a villain. Now look at In Space Part 1. At the start of the story, when we're introduced to our head engineer and primary Mark, he gives us lines that seem to imply that we go way back. Just like old times, eh, Captain? And then later, in the majority of the endings, we're confronted by an old version of Mark, one who, this again, the seems to share a long history you with us. That you Oh, close confidant. I'm historic. Dangers of conversation. One who apparently has something to apologize for. I'm sorry about a lot of things. And someone who's been waiting a long time to try and stop our apparently evil plans? I can't let you win. This is the final confrontation. Good versus evil. The hero. Versus the villain. When he succeeds, he tells us that it's time to move on. It's all in the past. Because I beat you! It's weird. None of this seems to fit. Like, I know that we screwed up the multiverse via our choices as the captain, but it doesn't seem like this is the way that this character would respond. It seems like he's commenting on things that are outside of the story that we were presented. And he is. The thing is, we've seen one character say all of these lines before. Repeat all of these same ideas. Friend of mine. Oh, close confidant. Oh, my friend. It's all in the past. But that's all in the past. Good versus evil. The hero versus the villain. But what is a hero without a villain? This isn't just any Mark, this is actor case. Mark. He's now in the role that he's always dreamed of. He's the hero. He's the one that gets to save the multiverse from evil. Mark put it like this during his breakdown of Damien. He's in this world where he gets to play out the leading role of any story he wants. He can't imagine other people not loving that. I would love to see a breakdown of In Space with Markiplier. I know he's kind of talked about it, but I don't, I'm pretty sure he's not talked about it since it came out when he could talk about spoilers like if he ever does that video i think we're definitely watching it like hearing just like the creator's insight into just this vast kind of vague narrative is always so fascinating it's like what were they thinking what did they actually intend versus like what did the people who watched it experience I think that's a really interesting dy dynamic. He's just a narcissist. He can't even imagine that he's wrong. But then why is Mark so determined to defeat us? It seemed like the captain was meant to just be us, the viewer, put into this adventure, but I'm not entirely convinced that that's the case. Even Doreen has us questioning our identity. I can't say I'm surprised. You always were stubborn. Do you even know who you are? Do you feel what like you've been here before? Or is this just like history true. repeating itself? She knows us. We are Damien. We are Darkiplier. Someone Damien. Celine always thought was stubborn someone who's been stuck in a repeating loop of events, someone who keeps being told that they need their rest, just like the signs next to our cryopod tell us. Get some sleep, you look tired. In fact, there's a lot of small stuff hidden in here too, like how in Who Killed Markiplier we get this line from the detective. Maybe I shouldn't have trusted someone so goddamn gorgeous. And in In Space, we regularly hear things like, Luck had never laid eyes on a creature so handsome and or beautiful. We are, once again, considered attractive. This is why 
why. Despite the fans crying out to see Darkiplier as a part of the series, he's yet to show up. We've been inside his body the whole time. We've been looking through his eyes. It's also why Actormark is so determined to beat us. Notice what happens during all the endings of part one. We're sent to a place outside the known universe. Be advised, designated location outside known universe. I know. That's the point. A black void with blue lighting. But is it just me or does this look a little bit familiar? Like say the black nothingness with blue that we see enveloping Damien in Who Killed Markiplier. Or again, in the ending of the video, Damien. The problem is, we don't remember who we are. On multiple occasions, we have Celine in the body of Doreen trying to jog our memories. It makes you feel like you've been through all this before. Do you understand, dearie? She's trying to bring Damien to the surface. She's trying to remind him of who he is and what he has to do. And so now, with the universe being rebooted, I believe that's exactly what we're gonna start to see. Damien beginning to remember. Dark Applier becoming who he was meant to be. The reboot means the stage is now set for actor Mark and Dark Applier to have their final showdown. After all these years, they can finally put to rest this quest for revenge that's been keeping them going for so long. Recently, Mark released a teaser for part two for full of codes that translated to quote, seven gods aligned, a key formed from their union. The lock hides in time. Seven gods, you say? Remind me how many characters were in Who Killed Markiplier? Oh yeah, seven. Celine, Damien, Wharfstash, Actor Mark, even the detective, the chef, and the butler. The last three of which appear as frame-perfect glitches in the endings of In Space. Basically, what I expect we're building towards is a reunion of all these characters towards the true canon ending of the whole series. An ending that'll put an end to the Dark Applier nice. actor Mark feud. Or maybe reverse time back to undo the events of Who Killed Mark Applier. That is why we've been getting all these noir themed hints throughout his recent videos. It's a callback to the overall tone and noir moments of Who Killed Mark Applier. We're building to the climactic ending of the Mark Applier cinematic universe. An the ending that leads us there. back to where it all began. But hey, that's just a theory. A game theory. I'll see you in space on May 2nd. Ooh, what do you think? That was definitely a good refresh refresher on the Markiplier lore, at least, as we go into part two. I had forgot a lot of those details. That was honestly pretty convincing. I could see... I don't know how that ends if we, we are Dark Applier, though. I assume we have to get, like, taken out of his body at some point. <laughs> kind of makes me want to do another playthrough and kind of look for some of those Easter eggs. I'm sure there's a lot more than they could even fit into the video, so that would be kind of fun. I don't know if we will, though. But I'm definitely interested in part two. What's the clock? We're like 14, 14 hours away. That'll be pretty interesting.